Hey everyone, uh, we were hanging out in Dimitri the other day was uh, mentioning something. He was trying to submit JavaScript and he, he was mentioning one way to do it. And we were working on a project for a client that Isaiah had figured out this really cool, amazing way. Well, he got it from Lexicos, right? But uh, go ahead, Isaiah, why don't you go ahead and demonstrate this whole yeah. thing? It's really so, cool. So yeah, the, the, the point is that it is a library that does something very interesting and that's the, the point of it. Um, uh, it's not as just simply having a browser open and sending JavaScript to it. It's not that. It's actually using a runtime, JavaScript runtime, that exists on your Windows machine, okay? And in some cases, it's using the Chakra engine or it's using the IE. Um, it depends how you load it. But the, um, the idea behind it, and this is what is actually... Um, interesting is that you can just evaluate JavaScript directly there. You see that? But not only that, you can actually define a function in JavaScript, okay? It is total JavaScript. You define it into a variable. You put it into this executable, and now the function could be called as if it was part of your object right here. So now you can call any, any function that was defined in Java script as if it was out of hot key code anywhere you want. Now, <laughs> I say, yes, and what about the parameters? Right, you can pass parameters. Any, you just define it with parameters. So, so yeah. for example, this is just a function, right? So this is the, the, the quickest example and very simple example that you can find. So first of all, you load your object and it is a specific um, version of the object because this class has two uh, child classes. You have the edge class and you have the IE class. I think it is around here. You see that? So you can either load IE or edge. Those are the runtimes that you can open. Now, after you load it and put it on your object, you can grab any code and it just JavaScript, pure JavaScript, but it has to be JScript, okay? That is one thing that I did notice. For now, I haven't figured out a way of using the latest version of JavaScript. Um, so there's a few options that might not work right away, but it's, it is something I figure out how to do it. Mention the really quick, cause you sent me a video on it, but the, the history of JScript, cause it was really <laughs> interesting. Well, so JScript is, it, it, you know that it, it started, um, JavaScript started with Netscape a long time ago. Um, that was 1990s when the first browsers came out. And at some point when Microsoft was actually getting a, a, a foothold with Internet Explorer, what they did is that they kind of copied uh, the, the JavaScript and made their own version. Uh, they made some modifications that is not the same as the standard JavaScript. And each browser had its own version of JavaScript until somebody said like, hey, we have to standardize this. And they started with what is called ECMAScript. And ECMAScript is just kind of like the standard of how you write JavaScript. And, but Microsoft said like, I have JavaScript, I have JScript here, take it or leave it. When they were 90% of the market, like you couldn't say anything about it. But now they're kind of like getting into, you know, playing nice with everybody, which is in Edge now. They are using the same V8 as everybody else. But um, JScript is still enabled by default. I haven't, I haven't played that much about it with it. So I don't know how to switch it to the latest version. But I know that it, this is using the Edge runtime. So it should use uh, JavaScript ECMA 6, which is the latest one. But in this case, as you can tell, this is just a pure vanilla JavaScript function. Right now, we're not doing anything. But after I add this into a variable, I just use the exec function to kind of like on my object, my edge object, I execute the JavaScript. And now it is in memory. It's like if you put it on the console. You see when you're in the console and you execute some JavaScript in there? The same, now the JavaScript is in memory of that particular object, but the object now exposes the functions as if it was out of hotkey code. 
as soon as you call this function, it would go ahead and look for it in the JavaScript memory section that it has and calls the function for you. So now, yeah, you want parameters. Yeah, let's put, yes. um, uh, let's put here uh, uh, var, uh, and that, that's gonna be i and var. Uh, I think you don't have to declare them here, right? No, you don't have to, i and j. And then you just return i plus j, right? So and now I just, box. I would just add it here. Yeah. Right, so this is version two, so I don't need that. Um, and basically right now you get your message box with, with your, but remember this is not auto hotkey. This is pure JavaScript. Now I could definitely just go ahead and use my document get, get, get element by ID, you know, um, by But what's ID. your document? That's the thing. You can set up your document. So you can set up your contacts because again, you are inside a JavaScript thing and you can load, for example, you can navigate to, uh, well, you can use the, the main document element and uh, go to a URL, set up a URL and everything. And, Anything that you can do with JavaScript, you can go ahead and do it here. Now, uh, I could also call, what was it, the, the not the HTTP request, what is it, the um, request, is it? The fetch. function? Fetch, fetch is the one that I'm looking for. So you can call your fetch, and then, you know, after your promises, then do this, and then you return what? You return the object that was, that was returned by the fetch function, and now that object is going to come out of it into auto hotkey and you could just go ahead and do a for loop on it or whatever you want. So basically, again, as I'm telling you, this is amazing, mainly because now your code is native out of hotkey out here. You just have to define your functions there. Is in our case, in our case, it was the, the use case was perfect because we were working with a client that he already has his old code, all his code was JavaScript but he wanted to do some automation in other windows and stuff like that outside the browser. And this tool allowed me to grab his code and then just take it out and use it in auto hotkey. Like if it was <laughs> an auto hotkey code. Tell, tell them the one little gotcha that, that got you caught there for, you know. Oh man. Yes. To remember. Yes. That he this is, it is yes. JavaScript. JavaScript. So let's go ahead and return an object here. Uh, so right, we have this guy here. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the JS. Um, so I'm gonna have an object here, js.test, right? Let me remove the parameters. So what I want to do is that this function just returns an object, that's it. So yeah. this now should have an object. And the way how we could go ahead and double check on that is that um, here for our OBJ, here we go. The OBJ variable now contains a com object. So now you are accessing a com object, right? So, oh, yeah, sure, because I closed it before it finished. Now let's go ahead and do the output debug object dot length. Simple enough, right? What is gonna happen is that you're gonna have this error. And the reason for it is because um, you, you know it, but you will forget. JavaScript is case sensitive. <laughs> Out of hotkey is not. <laughs> Out of hotkey is not. So this is actually like that. It's a lowercase l. In out of hotkey, you do not have this issue. So, uh, in especially the 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 or the autocomplete gave me that, and you just press tab and you forget about it. And I was like, it doesn't work. And I even made a whole post. But if you put the lowercase l, then everything should work. Um, let me see. Hold on. Oh no, this one is not because it's not, hold on, it cannot be like that. It has to be a an array, an array, yeah. So if it is an array, it should be, right. So in this case, right, let me see, uh, let me double check. 
it gives me that. It's trying to read an, an invalid memory for some reason. Let me double check. But in, I could take a look at the origin, the other code that we had. So the one that I, because right now the error that is giving me is different. It's trying to access something maybe because of the name of the variable. Let me use something else. Uh, let me try something. Right, there you go. It's, it was the name of the object, of the variable. Yeah, that's a weird one. It seems to me that the 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 um, let me try it now. That's interesting. Right, it is. Oh, but look at that. It is giving me the the information up here, but it's also returning a an error because it's trying to read part of a memory that it, I shouldn't be able to access. Hmm. There's something about it, but here's the deal. Um, if I could show you the original code, um, um, it's all right. I mean, I think the main point though is remember you're in JavaScript, right? Right. Yes. That's in general, it is JavaScript. Just make sure that you have the, the case as it should be, uh, but there's one thing that you also have to keep in consideration that if you want to access specific properties of, a, of an object or of, a, of, a, of an array, uh, the way how to access it in version two is a little bit tricky. I was gonna mention you should show that one as well. Right, that's, so, that's so basically, um, I don't know if it's gonna be keeping giving me these errors, but the way how you access it, because those things are properties, not key value pairs. So, and, and and especially if you are, how do I say this? Let me let me show you the example. This was exactly so text. So text, and then the other thing was. Uh, something like this and then um, it was link um, so. what the function was returning was a series of so the function the original function what it was doing was returning a list of, it was an array of objects. That's what it was returning. So after I got it, uh, I wanted to kind of like loop about it. So loop uh, loss.length, okay? And for each of them, um, let me do this for law in, was well, something like that. Uh, Oh no, because I was converting it back to an auto hotkey thing first. But let me do this loop loss dot length. So that gives me the whole amount of yeah. that's each of them. And I could basically say loss dot. And now I need to access the first element in the array. Usually, what you do is that you use this in an array, right? Yeah. But in JavaScript, that right here, it is being returned as a property, not as a key, not as an index, as a key value pair. Okay. So you and would so have to, or... no, so you would be like dot one, you see, like a property. And, and then you would have, right. But isn't uh, JavaScript is normally zero based, no? It is, yes, it is zero based. So it would be like this. For the zero, for the zero, and that for the second one. So this one would be that one, right? But what I would do, and this is the part that it gets really confusing, is that you could use the percent signs to use an expression in there. So you could go ahead in the uh, the a index minus one to get zero and one. You see that? Yeah. And then you would do the output d bar. Yeah. Now that's what become that's what actually kind of like trips people up because. It's not intuitive because in version two, it changed um, the way how you force expressions 
in objects. We don't have that in version one, not this way. You actually do something else that is way trickier, more confusing, but that's the idea. Um, but what you have to keep in mind is that when you're accessing indexes like this, you're not actually accessing indexes. This function is returning uh, properties. So you would have to refer to them as you do with properties, which is dot notation like that. But because on the other hand, it would be a map, right? But in any case, I know that it is gonna, it, it is giving me the information, but it is giving me some invalid memory read, right? And I have been having issues with, um, with auto hotkey right now, well, with code. It seems to me that when I was testing other programs, I messed up something with the memory <laughs> and now it is affecting everything. But um, uh, but as you can tell, it is actually reading the the things and it is returning whatever the text was. In my case, it's just giving me an error because of something in my computer. So, but basically, yeah, it is it is amazing that now you can use JavaScript functions as if they were just normal auto hotkey ones. So if you are somebody who have been working with JavaScript for a long time and you feel comfortable with it. You can create all your functions in JavaScript, and then without a hotkey, you just add hotkeys and add hot strings and stuff that you can interact with the desktop, even though your main functions and your logic is built with JavaScript. You can do that. Totally fine. And can you connect, for example, to an Edge window and execute JavaScript on it? No. So this particular thing is. Um, um, a runtime that is a box, a sandbox. So yeah. you could execute JavaScript independent of whether you have a window open or not. Because that's one of the things that sometimes we find a little bit, um, uh, how do I say, uh, limiting. And it is that for me to run a specific function or do some things in JavaScript, I must have a, a Chrome window or, or an Edge window open and sometimes I don't want that. Then I have to do these headless, headless stuff and uh, things like that when um, I probably don't need it. I, I, I just need to run some basic things, right? So um, in some cases, I think it is a very good library for whenever you want to, um, whenever you want to run code independent of a browser yeah. let me let me let me show you this let me show you this real quick um this is one of the examples that is uh created with with um one of the examples that come in with the library and this is creating a function that is a toast and uh this particular toast is for for example creating notifications okay so now notice, as I mentioned, that you have access to anything that you want on the, on the JavaScript namespacing. And look at that. This actually Windows namespace, you can actually access Windows namespacing on the Windows NT platform, which is something extremely advanced. But let me just go ahead and show you what this does. Notice this type of notification that I got down here. You see that? Yeah. So this type of note notification is not a Windows notification. This was not actually from Windows, because if it was from Windows, you would see it here in the in the notification settings, right? But it is not. So uh, when you click on it, this is entirely purely created with the JavaScript that we was that was created here. So as you can tell, it, it gives you a lot of flexibility and things, and just imagine you need you want this type of notification toast, but do you want to have a Chrome window open or an Edge window open for that? Not really. I just want the yeah. notification part of it, right? So this allows you to kind of like do very interesting things. Um, and I, again, uh, it at the beginning I I didn't understand how the library was working, but then I saw how you could use that in our hotkey as if it was native code 
And I was like, oh man, that's <laughs> that's amazing. That's great, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's lexical code. So. <laughs> yeah, it's lexical code, right? <laughs> the guy knows what he's doing, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, and and just just for the sake of a joke, he actually made a joke. Oh, of, right. Right. He made an auto hotkey um, executable. Yeah. That is actually JavaScript. It, it, so. You know that he created the engine, uh, the engine for AutoHotKey is kind of like a C++ program. So he yeah. rewrote the engine in JavaScript. And the funny thing is that now you can pass JavaScript to any script and it would run like if it was an AutoHotKey script. And it was so, so, and then in the end, it was just an April, a, April Fool thing. And I was like, dude, you rewrote, you rewrote the whole thing just for an April Fool. Joke. Programmer's humor is just, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. It was a very funny post. Um, but again, it looks like he has some interest in um, this merge between JavaScript and AutoHotKey. Some people do not like it. They are very passionate about it. Like, oh, come on, you're making this more JavaScript. My opinion is if it is popular, it's because it's working. Something is doing that is doing it right. So if you take the good things of it, and leave out the bad ones, <laughs> then I'm I'm fine with it. Because this triple equal sign, I don't know if you have seen that in JavaScript, you have yeah. equals, 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 and equals, 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 and they all mean different things. Like, yeah. I don't want that near my code. Okay, you, you don't, don't bring that, please. But bat arrow functions, dude, that's a time saver. Whenever you have a function that just performs one, one line of code, why would I have to have it in a different location on my code when I can just write it in one line? That's a great example of, you know, good things that have been ported into AutoHot. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that the, one of the powerful aspects of AutoHotKey is that it's quite simple and short and straight to the point. And some other language like JavaScript, they're way more advanced. It can do verbose a, a lot of other stuff, but yes, I'm I'm learning now a little bit the JavaScript, and I noticed that it's very extended. It's way bigger than Auto Hotkey. You can yes. have a, a lot of more functionalities, but it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be daunting at first, <laughs> but basically, uh, as with anything, um, when whenever you have a specific project, then it helps you out to kind of like build your knowledge on that particular area. Um, and with this particular library, now you don't have to leave out a hotkey. You can test your JavaScript code right there. Um, yeah. And it is kind of like awesome because you, this engine is in every single Windows 10 computer or more and actually Windows 7 as well. So this engine is there. You just have to take advantage of it. And this library, that's what it does. It opens the door for that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that review. I'm going to hit the stop recording here. <laughs>